Today we're going to be covering um, a topic that I'm going to add in um, for us for Chapter 9, Linear Programming. Um, it's basically dealing with systems of inequalities, but with word problems. Um, so this is going to be, our, again, our notes, Linear Programming. So in our table of contents, again, under Chapter 9, Inequalities, graphing inequalities on the number line, solving one variable inequalities, absolute value equations, absolute value inequalities, graphing two variable inequalities, graphing systems of inequalities, graphing systems of inequalities with exponential graphs, and then today, linear programming. So I'm going to be um, going to the worksheet that I sent you guys in Google Classroom titled uh, Chapter 9 Notes, Linear Programming. And you can either do it on a piece of paper, um, do it on, uh, if you printed it out, on the actual worksheet, or you can do it in, on your phone or tablet. So this is the worksheet that we're going to be looking at. We're gonna be actually doing these problems one, two, and four are the ones we're gonna be doing. So again, chapter nine, linear programming notes. Um, and if you're doing this on your phone or tablet, you can hit the little pencil and then you can edit right on here, okay? So let me read through the problem and then we'll get this set up and get going on it. So Lois makes uh, banana bread and nut bread to sell at a bazaar. A loaf of banana bread requires two cups flour and two eggs. A loaf of nut bread takes three cups flour and one egg. Uh, Lois has 12 cups of flour and eight eggs on hand. She makes $2 profit per loaf of banana bread and $2 profit per loaf of nut bread. To maximize profits, how many loaves of each type should she bake? So what our goal is, is to answer this question right here. We want to maximize profit, okay? And we wanna know how many loaves of each should we make. Now, this maximize profit is going to become our objective function. Our objective function is what we're trying to either maximize or minimize. Okay, so I'm gonna write max slash min, okay? So it's gonna be our max or our minimum, okay? So for a lot of these problems, if it's um, dealing with companies or making a certain type of product, you usually want to maximize profit or you want to minimize cost, okay? So in this case, we want to maximize profit. So this objective function is going to be on profit. Then our constraints, these are going to be our inequalities, okay? These are inequalities, like our system of inequalities that we're, we've been doing, but now we're going to set them up. Now we need to decide what our variables are going to represent and it's you there's a lot of information here we've got eggs we've got uh, flour we've got bread that's nut bread and banana bread but where you find what you're looking for is right here how many loaves of bread of each type should we bake that's what we're trying to find that's what we're trying to answer so i'm going to have x represent my banana bread and i'm going to have y represent the nut bread and usually what i'll do is i will um, whatever one's the first one, I'll usually have that be my X, and whatever one's the second one, I'll usually have that be my Y. Um, so again, banana bread, that's going to be my X. So X equals number of banana bread. I'm just going to put banana just to shorten it. Okay, but number of banana bread. And then my Y is going to be number of nut bread. And I'll just put y equals number of nut. And so for this, um, that's what my x and y axes are going to represent in my graph, okay? So in my graph, this right here is going to be banana. How many loaves of banana bread? This is going to be my nut. So let me just write that. So again, my nut bread on my Y and my banana bread is on my X, okay? And now what we're gonna do is we're going to write some constraints and constraints are inequalities, usually on some restrictions or limitations we have. 
So in this case, we have um, flour that we need to use in eggs, but we only have so much flour and so much eggs. So let me just kind of color code things here, okay? Um, I'm gonna use yellow for my flour. So I know I need two cups of flour for my banana bread. I need three cups of flour for my nut bread. And I have 12 cups of flour total. So those are gonna be helping me with one of my constraints. Um, another one I have, let me get a different color here. Sorry, I was gonna get blue. Another one I have is our eggs. So we have two eggs for banana bread. We need one egg for our nut bread. And we have eight eggs on hand. Okay, so we have eight eggs. All of those that I did in yellow and blue are going to be helping me with my constraints. Now, my objective function, I said, was this what we're going to maximize or minimize. And um, in this case, it's going to be on profit. So you'll notice that my banana bread, I get $2 profit for my banana bread. And I get $2 profit for my nut bread. So again, my banana bread is my X, my nut bread is my Y, and I get $2 profit for each loaf of banana bread and $2 profit for each loaf of nut bread. So for my objective function, again, which is what I'm trying to maximize or minimize, it's gonna be profit equals P equals, and then it's going to be $2 for each banana bread, so 2X, plus $2 for each nut bread, so 2y. So that is gonna be my objective function. This is what I'm gonna be plugging into to find my answer at the end. And that objective function is going to come over here and I'm gonna write it here in this table. Okay, so let me just write it here. It was 2x plus 2y. I get $2 for each loaf of banana bread and $2 for each loaf of nut bread, okay? Okay, so now let's go back and now let's do our constraints, okay, our inequalities. And so our constraints are, again, our restrictions. So let's do one for my yellow cups of flour and then one for my eggs, which is in blue. So I'm gonna put eggs here. I'm gonna zoom in for a sec. Okay, so I'm gonna put eggs and then I'm gonna write an inequality for the eggs. So for the eggs, I have two, I'm sorry, let me do, I meant to do my flour first. It doesn't matter, but flour was the one I was gonna do first, flour. So for my flour, I have two cups flour and three cups flour. Two cups for my banana bread, so that's gonna be two X. Three cups for my nut bread, so that's going to be three Y. And then we only have 12 cups, so it's gonna be less than or equal to 12. So that's one inequality. And this is why we practiced doing all the standard form, was because a lot of times with these linear programming problems, and you're gonna see these in integrated three, um, you have a standard form situation most of the time. Okay, um, so now let's do one for our eggs. Eggs are what I have in blue. Okay, so I have two eggs for my banana bread, so that's gonna be two X, plus one egg for my nut bread, so that's gonna be one Y, less than or equal to eight, because we only have eight total. So these are what we call constraints, okay? Now I'm gonna add on two more constraints, which kind of are common sense constraints. X represents how many banana bread loaves. So when I'm doing my shading, I'm not gonna shade forever and ever and ever and ever off my graph because I'm not gonna have negative numbers of banana bread and I'm not gonna have negative number of nut bread. So my banana bread X has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's gonna be a boundary. And my Y, my nut bread also has to be greater than or equal to zero. 
So if they don't give you a lower bound, zero is always going to be your lower bound for these types of, of situations, okay? So now I'm gonna take these constraints and we're gonna plot them on our graph. So when we're doing this, um, remember that this 2x plus 3y equal 12 is in standard form, so I can do the cover-up method. And my x-intercept is gonna be six. So I'm gonna to go to six. I'm gonna point at six on my x. Cover this up. My y, 3y equals 12, so my y is four. So I'm gonna come up to four. And I'm gonna zoom in for a second on that. So I'm going down four over six. I'm just gonna write it temporarily. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of it here in a second. So I'm going down four over six. Well, I can reduce that. I can reduce that to down two over three because you want to be accurate. So you want to do your slope as small as you can, okay? And then we're going to connect that. I'm going to get rid of this. So let me connect that. Okay, so there's that line. Now, um, let me just real quick also, before I do my shading, get these boundary ones in, okay? These ones here, X is gonna be greater than or equal to zero. But my X I did in red, my banana, so I'm gonna just do this in red. And so what X is greater than or equal to zero, X equals zero is this Y axis actually. That is this one here, X is greater than zero. And then I would be shading everything this way. And I'm not gonna shade it right now because we're gonna have a lot of colors, but I'll be shading this direction. And then my, my nut bread, which I had in green, um, y equals zero is actually this, okay? And I would be shading everything up, okay? So again, I'd be shading everything here in green. I'd be shading everything here in red. So right now, basically this whole quadrant would be shaded for those two. So now when I'm looking at this one here, which was my flower, I want why I want to look and decide if this is going to be less than or equal to two or greater than or equal to. Since my this is in standard form, I need to stop and look at my y. If my y is positive, it's going to stay. If my y was negative, it would have switched. So since it's positive, it's going to stay. So I'm going to shade everything below. So right now I'm here. Okay, this is where I am. Everything here is shaded. So everything here is going to satisfy my flower. Okay. So now I'm going to do my other one, which is my eggs. Okay. So again, to graph this, if I cover this up to find my x, making my y zero, I get 2x equals 8, which means my x is 4. And then if I cover this up, I get 1y equals 8, which means my y is 8. So I'm going to come up to 8. Okay, now let me write this one more time. So I'm going down 8 over 4, down 8 over 4, which I can reduce to negative 2 over 1. So I'm going to go down 2 over 1, down 2 over, whoops, sorry, started in the wrong spot. Sorry, I need to start up here. Uh, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one. You see they're actually going to share that point, down two over one. You should end at, at that same point right there. And I'm going to draw my line. And again, this one is in standard form, but my y is positive. So since this was less than, it's going to stay. So I'm going to be shading everything under this line. Now, as I'm shading, you see that this is blue, this is yellow. Right here, this is going to be both colors. So again, this blue is going to satisfy my condition for my eggs. I'll have enough eggs to make anything in this, but I'm not gonna have enough flour. Over here, I'll have enough flour, but I won't have enough eggs. Here is where I'm gonna have enough of everything. So this right here is our feasible region. I'm actually going to shade it in kind of a green since blue and yellow make green. So this right here is going to be our, what we call feasible region. Okay. Let me write that. Get rid of this. 
better pen. So this is going to be our feasible region. So any values in here will satisfy both conditions. So as an example, let's say I was going to make one banana bread. I can make one banana bread, one nut bread, one banana bread, two nut breads, one banana bread, three nut breads, not one banana bread and four nut breads. That's going to be up here. It's going to be in the blue. So every single value within this green, okay, where again, the blue and the yellow make green, this is our feasible region. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to find the boundaries of this, okay? So let me just make this a little darker so we can kind of see it. So we're looking at this region right here. And this region has one point. That's a vertex. Okay, so a vertex is where any of the lines forming the boundary meet. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. We have four. These other values here are not vertices that I'm looking for. I want it in the feasible region on the border. So let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see me write these points. This is zero, zero. Over here, this point is four, zero. That's a zero. Now this point here is one, two, three, comma, two. So this is going to be three, comma, two. And this point here is going to be zero, comma, four. So zero, comma, four. So what happens is these um, vertices are where your maximum or your minimum occur. Okay, these, everything here will satisfy the conditions. But if you want to maximize or minimize, your maximum or minimum are at one of these vertices. So I'm going to write those points here. Okay, so let me kind of zoom out a little bit. So here for my vertex, one of them is zero, zero. One of them is four, zero. Um, zero, four. Well, let me do this one here, three, two, before I forget it. Three, two. And zero, four. So I went around the boundary. And again, each of these vertices is where two of the boundary lines forming it are meet and form a vertex. So now I'm going to plug these into my objective function, the one that we are going to maximize profit. Remember, $2 for each banana bread, $2 for each nut bread. So I'm going to be working this out. So let me kind of zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to go 2 times 0 plus 2 times 0, which is 0, which makes sense. If I make no loaves of anything, I'm not going to be making any money. Okay, so now I'm going to go 2 times my x, which is 4, plus 2 times my y, which is 0, which ends up giving me 8, $8. Now I'm going to do 3 comma 2, so it's going to be 2 times 3, plus 2 times 2, so I get 6 plus 4, which is 10. And here I have 2 times 0 plus 2 times 4. So I get 0 plus 8, which is 8. So we want which one's going to give us the most money. So the one that's going to give us the most money, money that's going to maximize our profit is this one right here, because that's $10. This is $0, $8, $8, $10. Now, when they want you to write an answer, remember what this three and this two represent. The three represents how many banana breads. The two represents how many nut breads. And then we want to know how much money we're making. So it's important to also say the maximum profit. So I'm going to say for max profit, for max profit, of 10 whole dollars, um, Lois should make okay, so she's going to make three banana and two nut breads. So she's going to make, I'm going to zoom up in a little bit more, um, three banana and 
two nut breads. And that's our answer. Okay. So I'm going to zoom out just in case you need to see anything here. Okay. And then we're going to be moving on to the next problem. So problem number two. Juan makes two types of wood clocks to sell at um, local stores. It takes him two hours to assemble a pine clock, which requires one ounce of varnish. It takes him two hours to assemble an oak clock, which takes four ounces of varnish. Juan has 16 ounces of varnish in stock and he can work up to 20 hours. Um, so those are some of our constraints, some of our um, restrictions there. If he makes $3 profit on each pine clock and $4 profit on each oak clock, how many of each type should he make to maximize profit? So maximize profit, again, we're gonna be maximizing profit. So I'm gonna put P equal over here. And we need to figure out what our X and our Y are going to be. So again, if we look at the question, the question says, how many of each type should we make? So what we are talking about is the clocks. So I'm going to have X represents my pine clock. Okay, and it's $3 profit for each pine clock. I'm going to have Y represent the oak clock. And there's $4 profit for each oak clock. So let me get that information down. So X equals, I'm just gonna say number of pine, it's pine clocks, but I'm just gonna to try to save some space here. So X equals number of pine clocks. And Y equals number of oak clocks. And then my objective function is what we're either maximizing or minimizing. So we're maximizing profit. So I'm going to put P equals for profit. P equals for profit. And it is $3 for each pine clock. So 3x. I'm going to scoot it up a little bit so I'm not running into my pens there. Um, plus. Um, four dollars for each oak clock. So four, whoops, four Y. And that's going to be my objective function. That's what I'm going to plug my vertices into. So now I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it over here where it says profit equals. And so this is going to be three X. plus 4y. Okay, profit equals 3x plus 4y. Let me make my y look a little better. Okay. So now, once I have that, I need to figure out my constraints. Okay. So what do I need here? Well, let me get yellow and blue again. So let's see. Um, I have time. So it takes two hours to assemble a pine clock. It takes two hours to assemble an oak clock and he can work for 20 hours. So I'm gonna have a constraint on hours, okay? Um, so let me do hours. I'm gonna make that a little smaller. Okay. And so what I know about the hours, okay, it's two for each pine, and x is pine, so two x, plus it's two for each oak, and oak is y, so two y, and we have 20 hours, so less than or equal to 20. So that's gonna be one constraint. Now, I also have a varnish, okay? So we have one ounce of varnish for our pine clock, four ounces of varnish for our oak clock, and we have only 16 ounces of varnish in stock. So I'm gonna write one for our varnish. 
So um, varnish. And let's see, I have one ounce for my pine clock. So that means one X. Plus I have four ounces for my oak clock, so four Y. And we only have 16 ounces, so less than or equal to 16. And again, if I do not have any restrictions on any um, lower bound, you definitely are not going to be making negative pine clocks. So I'm going to have X is greater than or equal to zero. And you're not going to be making negative um, oak clocks. So Y is greater than or equal to zero. And so let me start by just getting those ones on the graph real quick. So um, I'm going to be doing this one in red again. X equal zero would be a vertical line right here. That's X equal zero. And since it's greater than, I'd actually be shading everything here. Okay, I'm just going to hold off on my shading. And my Y is greater than or equal to zero. This is Y equal zero. And I would be shading everything up. Okay, so right now I'd be shading everything here. So now let's see these ones. So this one I'm gonna do in yellow because that was my yellow, that was my hours. And I'm gonna find my X and my Y intercept. So to find my X intercept, I get two X equals 20. So X is 10. So I'm gonna go to 10 on my X and I'm gonna put that point. And then I'm gonna cover up this and I get 2y equals 20, so my y is 10 also. So I'm going down 10 over 10, and 10 over 10 is 1, which means I'm going to go down 1 over 1. Okay, so as I'm graphing this, again, you want to be accurate. I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. You want to put the points so you see them. And then we're going to connect it because maybe some of these points might end up being a vertex for us. And then for this one, I want y less than or equal to. Again, it is going to be stay because this is a positive y. So I'm going to shade everything here. Again, it is bounded by the green and the yellow. I'm sorry, the green and the, and the red line. So everything here. This would satisfy the hours. So now I'm going to do my other one, which is varnish. And for the varnish, for the varnish, um, when I'm doing this inequality, doing this line, I've got x equals 16. So I'm going to go all the way out to here to 16. And I get 4y equals 16, so y is 4. So let me just remind us, this is down 4 over 16, which reduces to a negative 1, 4. So I'm going to be going down 1 every 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 1 every 1, 2, 3, 4. And it actually landed on the same point there. Down 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I'm going to connect the line and again have to look to see this is a positive y so that's going to stay the direction it's pointing so i'm going to be shading below this so i'm going to be shading below this line okay so as i'm shading below the line you see here i'm shading both colors okay so i've got both colors going here and then when i come over here you see i just have my blue so everything here is just going to satisfy my varnish. Everything here is just going to satisfy my um, hours. But everything here is going to satisfy both of them. So let me just kind of darken it in. So this is our feasible region. And we just kind of draw around. So this is what I'm going to be looking at this section right here. Okay. So this is going to be my feasible region. And for this feasible region, I have a point here. I have a point here. I have a point here. 
and I have a point here, it's at the corners, okay? And so the coordinates, this is zero, zero. This is 10 comma zero. This is eight comma two, eight comma two. And this is zero comma four. So those are the vertices that I'm going to write down here. Okay. So let me start off with my zero, zero. I'm going to go this way. My 10, zero, eight, two, and zero, four. And then I'm going to be substituting these into my objective function. So all of my x points are going to go in for x and all my y's in for y. So I'm going to get three times zero plus four times zero equals zero. Um, three times 10 plus four times zero. And that's going to be 30 plus zero, which is 30. This one, three times eight plus four times two. So I get 24 plus eight, which is 32. And then this one, I'm going to have three times zero plus four times four. And when I work that out, I get 16. Now, remember, we are trying to maximize profit. So we want the one that gives us the most money, which is going to be this one right here. Okay, because that's going to be 32. So let me write my answer. Okay, so for max profit of $32, for max profit of $32, um, let's see, who was this? Juan. Juan is going to make eight fine clocks and two oak clocks. Juan must make eight pine clocks. I'll just put eight pine and two oak clocks. And that's our answer. Okay, let me zoom back out in case anyone missed anything. Let me get it up a little bit. And again, we don't need this. And then we're going to be moving on to problem four. I'm going to skip to problem four. Okay, so on the next page, problem four. I want to do this one because this one's going to be a minimize this time. And in this situation, we're going to have a couple of other things that are going to be happening. We're going to have some different constraints on our X and our Y than we're, we've seen in the past. And we might have this be something where we shade above also. So let's take a look at this. So let me kind of zoom in. So a biologist needs at least 40 fish for her experiment. Okay. At least uh, she cannot use more than 25 perch or more than 30 bass, okay? So we have some restrictions there. Each perch costs $5 and each bass costs $3. How many of each fish should she use in order to minimize costs? So this is gonna be a minimum this time, okay? And so our, it's gonna be cost that's going to be our objective function, okay? Now in this problem, um, we have perch, okay, and we have bass, right? That's what we have. Now, we know that um, the bass costs $3. We know the perch costs $5. Um, I'm going to let x equal number of perch, 
and I'm going to have y equal number of s. Okay, so when I'm doing my objective function, and my objective function is minimizing cost, so I'm going to, instead of using p, I'm going to use c, just so that I remember it's cost, and I remember I'm minimizing, minimizing, okay? And so I know it costs $5 to buy each of the perch, so that's going to be 5x, plus it costs um, $3 for each of the bass, so 3y. So that is going to be our objective function. So I am going to put that right here, okay? So I know C equals 5X plus 3Y. That's what I'm going to plug into. But this time I want the minimum, so I want the smallest value. Now, for the constraints, it's not like our banana bread where I have certain ingredients. It's not like my pine or oak clocks where I have certain supplies I'm going to be using it, um, to make it. In this case, we are just talking about the number of fish. So one of these inequalities is going to be right up here. I'm just going to do this in black. Um, we need at least 40 fish. Now the word at least can be confusing. At least means 40 or more. So we're going to have x plus y is greater than or equal to 40. So if I take all of my fish, my perch and my bass, and add them together, it needs to be at least greater than or equal to 40. Now, I also have that my perch, um, I need, um, she cannot use more than 25 perch, or more than 30 bass. So the tw she can't use more than 25 perch. That means she can have up to 25, but not more than. But she also can't have negative perch. So I'm gonna write it like this. I'm gonna go zero, less than or equal to X, less than or equal to 25. So my perch need to be from zero to 25. That's kind of the range of perch. And the range of the bass, um, no more than uh, 30, okay? So, but again, you're not going to be having negative, so it's going to be zero less than or equal to x less than or equal to 30. So let me start with these ones, okay? I'm uh, sorry, that's a, that's a y. Apologize. This is my best or y. So if I start with this one, I really have two horizontal lines, okay? So let me just uh, label this. This is my best. And... This one over here is my perch. Okay. So for my bass, okay, this bottom one here, I'm going to have from 0 to 30. So from 0, okay, from 0, which would be here, this would be my y being 0, okay, to 30. 30 is up here. And so I would be shading in between these two lines. That's what this is. Now my other one, zero less than or equal to X less than or equal to 25, those are gonna be two vertical lines. So I have a vertical line here, and I have at 25. So right now I would be shading in between my two red lines, I'd be shading in between my two green lines, which actually is giving me this region right here, okay? But I do have this inequality, so I need to also do that inequality. Now, this one, if I cover up my y, I get x is 40, so my x-intercept is 40. And if I cover up my x, I get y equals 40, so my y-intercept's 40. So I'm basically going down 40 over 40, which means 1 over 1. Now, these are scaled by 5s, but since they're both the same um, units, I can really just count one box. One box, down one over one, down one over one. Because I'm really going five over five, but five over five is a one. And then I'm gonna connect it. So again, up to this point, I was in between these two green, in between these two red, and this one is positive y, and it's greater than or equal to. 
So for this one, let's say I just do it in yellow. This one, I'd be shading everything above this, okay? But I also need to shade everything in between these green ones. Okay. So right now I'm basically in this section here. Okay. But I also need to shade everything in, in between the reds, which would be here. So when I do that, again, in between these, in between these and above this ends up being this triangle here. So let me just kind of, I'm gonna just do it kind of in an orange color just so we can kind of spot it. So it's going to be this section right here, okay, this right here, this triangle, that is my feasible region. And so for that triangle, I have this side, I've got this point, this side, I've got this point, this side, and then I have this point. I have these three points. And the coordinates of this point is 25 comma 15 is this one here. Okay, so this is 25 comma 15. This one up here is 25 comma 30. 25 comma 30. Over here, this is going to be 10 comma 30. So 10 comma 30. And those three are going to be my vertices that I'm going to put here. Okay. So let me make this a little bigger. So I have 30, sorry, 20, 10 comma 30, 10 comma 30. I have 25 comma 30. 25 comma 30 and I have 25 comma 15 25 comma 15 and now I'm going to substitute those into these equations all of these ones here for x all of these ones here for y so let me just kind of zoom a little bit more so I'm going to go 5 times 10 plus 3 times 30 okay get my calculator for that. So 5 times 10 plus 3 times 30 is 140. So this is going to be 140. Okay. So now I'm going to go 5 times 25 plus um, 3 times 30. And I get 215. So again, this was 5 times 25 plus 3 times 30. And that was 215. And then my last one, 5 times 25 plus 3 times 15. So let me just snag that last one and change this to a 15. And I end up with 170. Now remember, this one was a minimum. So this time I want to pick the one that's the least amount. So in this case, it's going to be this because I, I'm spending this money. I want to spend the least amount possible. So for this, um, for minimum cost of $40, for minimum, I'm going to abbreviate, minimum cost of $140, sorry, $140, get that on screen. Um, you need 10 perch and 30 bats. And that's your answer. So on tonight's homework, I'm giving you guys one of these problems. The rest of the problems are review, okay, of all the inequalities and absolute value problems you've been dealing with. And I gave you one of these problems. It's kind of more like this type where you kind of have a situation where you, you're going to be talking about your X and your Y like this. 
Um, so you can refer to this and make sure you do submit this in and get your credit for notes. And I'll see you guys next class.